A few weeks ago, I made a video about 7 things that need to change in Battlefield 2042 and where I was talking about several mechanics and features that should be added, tweaked or improved. And in the comments below, you guys had a lot more great ideas and feedback, some of which I want to go over today, alongside a few suggestions I still have on my own list. I know Battlefield 2042 seems to go towards the end of its life cycle, but many of the features on this list are good and valuable feedback that should be taken into consideration. If not for 2042, then maybe for the next title. So the first point that I saw in the comments a lot and that I also had on my own list is to bring back assist counts as kill. Right now it doesn't matter how much damage you have dealt to an enemy already, can be 99 damage and when a teammate comes and kills them it's an easy kill for your mate but only an assist for you. And I'm not quite sure if the feature was in Battlefield 5 but it was definitely in Battlefield 1 and 4 and I always found that this was pretty good good and still rewarding for the player who had done most of the work. I believe in Battlefield 1 you had to deal at least 80 damage to trigger the assist that counted as kill, so it's not just giving an enemy a scratch and then getting a kill, you really had to do most of the work. And this feature is not only great because kills give you more XP than assists, but also because the assists that count as kill would count towards your weapon mastery. And I know for some weapons this is easy enough without this mechanic, but on others it isn't and especially for the normal player with a job and kids, this would make these masteries a bit easier to complete. Another feature we had in former titles and that was also quite useful was the option to zero the scope on sniper and marksman rifles. I can remember using this a lot, especially when you prefer to play on a certain distance and what it does is that your sniper scope can get adjusted to a certain distance, for example 100 meters, and then you don't need to aim higher and compensate the bullet drop anymore. You can target the enemy directly with the middle of your crosshair and I know it's not an essential feature, but if you love to play main as a sniper, this is a good mechanic. Now onto something that is only specific for 2042 and that was actually just changed with one of the last updates and that's a shared ammo pool for underbarrel launchers. This mechanic was in the game for a while and was then removed and instead every launcher got its own ammo pool. With the start of season 6, this ammo pool was reduced from 3 to 1 grenades per launcher. And this might sound like a good change at first glance and surely reduced the explosive spam on the new map redacted, but on all other maps where you also have to face vehicles. The HE or AP launchers were really useful, especially when you had to take on a vehicle on your own. But now it's not as useful anymore since you only have one AP or HE grenade. So bringing back the shared ammo pool would be very helpful. This means you would have three grenades in some and it's up to you how to use them. When you have three on the barrel launchers equipped like it is at the SFAR, you can use one grenade per launcher or you use all three at one launcher. It's your choice and I think that would be the best better solution and gives players more control instead of making the decisions for them. And talking about giving players more control, there was one idea in the comments I really liked about Angel's supply drop and the suggestion was to not let it drop down from the sky anymore but instead make it placeable so it can also be used indoors. Plus give it a resupply radius similar to the ammo and mad crates but a little bit bigger. And just like the ammo crates, it would only resupply your primary and secondary weapon automatically, but to receive additional explosives or to change parts of your loadout, you would still have to interact with it. This would make the crate a lot more rewarding and more angel players would probably remember to use it. And then there was of course also a suggestion for our friend Dozer, which is to let normal bullets deal a small amount of damage towards his shield, similar to Iris' deployable cover. This would mean that at some point the shield will break and then goes into cooldown and slowly regrows in Dozer's pocket, just like any other specialist gadget. And it will also force Dozer players to use the shield more wisely and retreat if necessary. An additional feature could be that the shield can be repaired by engineers, but that's just as a little gimmick. Now moving on to a completely different topic that had actually started as a Twitter discussion and that was the question if there is a good way to avoid spawn trapping in Battlefield 2042 and to avoid camping tanks that fire from their HQ all across the map. And even though this is only an issue on some maps and modes, I think it's something that might be worth talking about. If it's not for 2042, then maybe for the next title. And what I really liked was actually the approach of Battlebit Remastered, cause here you can't fire with your weapon or vehicle 
vehicle while you are in the base and you can also not get shot inside of it. And this makes the HQ to a real safe zone for both of the teams, but also avoids camping tanks because they cannot take a shot as long as they are inside of their spawn. It would not avoid spawn camping though, so here I like the approach that DICE has in Tactical Conquest, because when one team has captured all objectives in this mode, they cannot spawn at them anymore, which inevitably pushes them back and gives the other team more room to breathe and to get out of their spawn. And I think this would also work in Conquest since it's only a bigger scale. In addition, it might be helpful to temporarily disable vehicle call-ins for the team that holds all objectives, so they would have to start at their base and drive all the way through the map, which would give the trapped team more space as well. I'm not sure this would help though, but it's something I had in my mind about this topic, so I thought it would fit pretty well here. But tell me what you think about this in the comments below, I'm always interested in reading your opinions. Below the last video, there were also two great suggestions for better interaction between vehicles and infantry. And first one is a repair offer for vehicles that are below a certain health, maybe something around 25%. So similar to the mechanic where you can ping a downed player and tell them that you are coming for a revive, you would be able to ping a vehicle that is low on health and the driver will get a notification that an engineer is incoming and offers repairs. I'm almost certain we had this in either Battlefield 1 or 5 already and in 2042 it would definitely help with the communication between drivers and engineers. Another Battlefield 1 mechanic that was also pretty cool is that tanks were able to drop ammo and med crates for infantry and help with resupplying their team. This would be a nice upgrade in 2042 as well and gives the tanks team play capabilities. But I think it was enough for weapons, specialists and vehicles so far and I want to move on to three points that are focused on UI, matchmaking and progression. And the first mechanic I personally would like to see in the game is the ability to zoom the map of the spawn screen in and out and move it around. I'm using Battlebit as an example here again because it's closest to Battlefield and this would make it a lot easier to spawn on a squad mate or a spawn beacon when your squaddies are pretty close to each other or when there is always one in combat. Right now trying to spawn on the only squad member that is not in combat can be very tricky and quite frustrating when you want to get in and help. So zooming in and out and moving the map around could be helpful in these situations. And when talking about maps, of course I also have to request a map rotation. I still find it so annoying that there are times when it feels like the game only has three maps simply because you play the same maps over and over again. So a simple map rotation similar to Portal would be really good for All Out War or like another one of you had suggested in the comments, they could add an option to select or deselect different maps so you only get into matchmaking when one of the maps you have selected is running at the server. The question here is only how well this works when the player count declines again and it gets hard to find for lobbies anyhow. But it's still an interesting solution for the problem with playing the same maps several times in a row. And at the end, something I still have on my list and that's daily missions in addition to the weekly ones to keep players engaged and motivate them to play every day. This is pretty normal in other games like Call of Duty or Apex Legends and it gives you additional XP. The missions are usually randomized for each player so not everyone is doing the same missions at the same time and in the case of Battlefield 2042 they could simply be taken from the pool of tier 1 weekly missions. These are always easy to complete but could encourage players to check the game more frequently and earn some additional XP to progress through the battle pass faster. And that's all I have for you today. Like I said, be sure to share your thoughts and opinions in the comments below and don't forget to drop a like if you enjoyed the video. Until then, thanks for watching and thanks to my members for the additional support. I'm Catwoman and you are awesome.